Looking at the piece today, it's hard to imagine that this place was once a bomb crater at the center of one of the fiercest wars of the 20th century. I'm Amiad Horowitz. I'm a journalist. I love learning about history, including the history of the country in which I live, Vietnam. Especially as an American, I want to understand more about the Vietnamese people's war of resistance against the United States. I want to find out for myself the answer to the question of how a one small, poor country like Vietnam fought and won against a superpower like the U.S. and rose to the strength it has today. I am very fortunate to have been accompanied and supported by my Vietnamese colleagues in this journey. đã tới miền quê em quang chỉ thừa thiên qua đường chín tình gió linh lắng nghe dòng hò mừng vui bao tin thắng trần sống ba lòng bay bồng lời ca quê nhà ta nay đã đổi thay lớn lên từng ngày theo những à, bác muốn à, à nói nghĩ sẽ biết gì về chị Trang ở Việt Nam tức là tấm nguyện thì chúng tôi là những người lính cũng muốn người Mỹ này hiểu lại sau những cái năm tháng những cựu chiến binh Mỹ đã từng tham chiến ở Việt Nam trở lại thì cái vùng quê khai xanh núi hóa hôm nay thì nhìn thấy là cái sự nó thay đổi ngoài những cái về Mỹ chắc là những cựu chiến binh Mỹ cũng không thể tưởng tượng ra là nó có cái màu xanh ấy trở lại như thế thì ngày xưa người Mỹ có xác định là gần như là cái khai xanh là hàng trăm năm sau cây cối có thể mọc lại được nhưng mà đúng là cũng đến hôm nay thì đúng là một cái năm 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 mọi cái và cái xanh nó đã đổi mới hoàn toàn nó có những đồn điền cà phê cà phê rồi có những cái là công trình điện gió tức là nếu nói đúng là đất đã hồi sinh nhưng mà thực ra tôi ở tham gia cái cái cuộc chiến tranh chống thiếu nước này thì thực tế là từ biết là từ mẫu thân mà chúng tôi là ở đây chính xác là hết năm bảy ba Tức là sau khi đánh giải phóng tỉnh Hồ Chí và cho đến kết thúc chiến tranh Việt Nam khi vào đến dinh được lại sau ngày giải phóng và sau khi tôi nghỉ năm 2007 thì gần như năm nào ít nhất có phải là bốn lần là vào thăm những người đã khuất và gặp lại những người đã sống Để giới thiệu với các bác đây là, là, là ban quản lý Mỹ Trang, đồng chí trưởng ban phó ban và đây đồng chí làm là bộ đội cũ và đây là anh nhà báo người Mỹ nhưng mà các anh cho tôi lên lên là, trên đi lên thắp hương rồi. Ngoài lại vào thăm các chiến hữu đồng đội tôi nguyên quân nhân sư đoàn ban tư để về thăm các anh cho tôi cùng với đoàn công tác đồng chí sư mạnh khỏe để hàng năm có điều kiện là vào hương khói thăm các đồng chí vì cái điều kiện chiến tranh nó quá lâu lắm rồi Tức là giới thiệu với bạn là đây là căn cứ thờ cơn là cái căn cứ mạnh nhất của quân đội Mỹ trong thời kỳ chiến tranh Việt Nam 
khi vào đây thì có lập theo cái hệ thống bằng hàng rào móc Mara cũng nghĩ là Bắc Việt Nam là không thể vượt qua được nhưng cũng không ngờ là mẫu thân thì là bộ đội Việt Nam là đã tập kích đánh thẳng vào đây và trận đánh kéo dài toàn bộ cái khu vực Tà Cơn này và Long Bê là trong vòng 50 ngày đêm nhưng mà mở màn chiến dịch là tháng 1 và kết thúc là tháng 6 người Mỹ đành phải bỏ khai xanh thì về phía quân đội Việt Nam thì cũng tạo điều kiện để cho hơn 5.000 lính thủy đánh bộ Mỹ và kỵ binh bay là rút khỏi chiến trường khai xanh 55 năm trước và hôm nay là chúng ta gặp nhau đây nhưng mà không ai nghĩ là sau 55 năm về đây cái vùng chiến khu xưa mà nó lại được thay đổi thế này Chứ ngày xưa ai nghĩ có cái cột điện gió này là 15 năm trước mà nhìn cột điện gió này, nghĩ như cái B-52 nó bay. <cười> Bây giờ, the memoir, portrait of a 304th Division soldier, recounted by former veterans who directly fought on the Battle of Hesang at the beginning of November 1967, The division received orders to march into the battlefield and engage in combat in the Hesain area, which is now the town of Hesain, Hunghua District, Guangxi Province. The plan for the general offensive and the uprising during the Tet Offensive in 1968 was kept secret until the last minute. Only after the attacks on cities and towns had taken place were we informed of the mission of the Route 9 Hesain campaign, which aimed to draw the enemy in, keep them trapped in the mountainous jungle for several days, and create favorable conditions for our main offensive targeting the cities and towns. The Hesain military base was the center of an electronic fence system constructed as the strongest and most fortified defensive complex of the United States in the northern region of South Vietnam. It includes the fortified positions of Lang Vai, Camp Hung Hoa, Hui San, and Takon Airfield Defense Cluster. The entire defensive line of Route 9 Khe San stretches nearly 20 kilometers from the southern 17th parallel to Route 9, spanning 100 kilometers along the Binh Hai River to the Vietnam-Laos border. With this fortified defensive line, the United States hoped to prevent the North Vietnamese Liberation Forces from launching offensives or infiltrating the temporary military demarcation line into the south. The U.S. government also believed that Khaesan would be a disastrous ending for the North Vietnamese Army. However, the U.S. did not expect that the Liberation Forces would fiercely fight back to retake Khaesan and pin down U.S. forces on the battlefield. On the night of January 20th and the early morning of January 21st, 1968, the artillery campaign of the 304th Division, the Liberation Forces, launched a surprise offensive with consecutive and powerful attacks, targeting multiple important objectives in Khaesan. This created a significant surprise, forcing the U.S. forces at Khaesan to fight from fortified positions and bunkers. Resupply could only be carried out through airlift. From February 8th to March 31st, the U.S. forces at Hesain were besieged and under constant shelling for 50 days and nights. On June 26th, the U.S. military was ordered to withdraw from Hesain. On June 27th, 1968, the AP news agency wrote, The withdrawal of U.S. forces from Hesain is a failure for the U.S. Senior U.S. officials had previously said this base must be defended at all costs. On June 30th, 1968, the BBC radio broadcast stated, The retreat from Hesain is not simply abandoning a stronghold, it's abandoning an illusion and a policy that all U.S. efforts have built, now crumbling like the fortified concrete steel bunkers at Hesain. After 170 days and nights encircling Khaesan, on July 9, 1968, 
the victory flag of the Liberation Army flew over Takun Military Airport, marking the victory of the Route 9 Khaisan campaign, contributing significantly to the success of the General Offensive and the uprising during the Tet Offensive in 1968, a decisive victory on the military front, forcing the U.S. to de-escalate the war and start the peace negotiation process. In the United States, right from the 1960s and early 1970s, the protest movement against the Vietnam War took place with great enthusiasm, attracting millions of people regardless of skin color, age, or gender. Immediately after the 1968 Tet Offensive, the anti-war movement became stronger and stronger. A large number of Americans and peace-loving people of other countries opposed the continuous U.S. military escalation in Vietnam. Violent anti-war demonstrations had a strong impact on the U.S. government, forcing the U.S. to stop bombing and negotiate at the Paris Peace Conference. I was involved with the Indochina peace campaign, uh, which started with Tom Hayden and Jane Fonda to travel around the United States talking to people just about Vietnam to get attention to it. Because the Paris Agreement, the Paris Accords, um, were going to be negotiated now and we wanted to put pressure on the American government to sign the Accords. And we were very successful with this. A lot of people heard us. A lot of uh, attention was raised to Vietnam and the Paris Accords were signed. The Vietnam War began in 1954 and lasted for 21 years. In addition to the great loss of life for both sides, the war also left heavy spiritual losses along with serious problems affecting the economy, society, and the environment. It was the American veterans returning from the war in Vietnam who witnessed the war firsthand that helped the U.S. public understand the nature of the war to weigh public opinion against the war. I believe one of the reasons America went to war with Vietnam is because it did not understand Vietnam's history. It did not understand Vietnam's culture. It did not understand the Vietnamese people and the Vietnamese people quest for peace and freedom. If the United States would have understood that, we never would have come to war. Having been involved in the peace movement, protesting against the war, and actively engaged in translating books on the topic of the Vietnam War, American writer, journalist, Lady Borton, now in her 80s, still frequently visits Vietnam as her second homeland. The woman named Ut Lee in Vietnam is recognized as a loyal and steadfast friend of the Vietnamese people. As an observer of the war in Vietnam, she stated, that Vietnam has always been proactive in people-to-people -people diplomacy and promoting peace since the early stages of the conflict. The Vietnamese organized friendship meetings between Americans in the peace movement and themselves. So the first one was women, and that was uh, July of 1965 in the Marines land in March, so it's only a few months later. So it's um, what the Vietnamese call people's diplomacy, uh, so it's people with people. What became very clear to me, but I had always seen, uh, the Vietnamese never thought they could negotiate with the Americans. We're too big, too big, too much material. But it allowed them to be in Paris, and Paris was the media center of Europe. And so from Paris, they could, each of those weekly meetings, where nothing happened, right? Nothing happened, right? Except afterwards, out came Sun Tui, absolutely gorgeous man with his beautiful smile, and Madame Bin's really gorgeous, really French, and they spoke to the international press. So that was the story, and they 
told the story of what was happening in the North and the South. And the Vietnamese organized it so that every week there was a special envoy who went from the South carrying film and stories and went from the South up the Ho Chi Minh Trail to Hanoi. And then they radioed that. When the delegation in Paris presented, they had documents and stories of the My Lai Massacre and of the prisoners in Kung Dao and all the rest. And we didn't believe it, but there it was. And that, and they met with anyone who came, whether it was veterans, people who were anti-war, people who were pro-war, they would meet with anybody and tell their story. And that's what they were busy doing. So from your perspective, uh, the Vietnamese people were seeking peace from the very beginning. Absolutely. Hey. Hi, I'm here. Hi, good to see you. Good to see you. Thank you. Welcome. My book. Written in any language. There is a special connection to Vietnam for the artist George Burchett. Although he did not participate in the Vietnam War, he had a profound perspective on the conflict. His father was the famous Australian journalist Wilfred Burchett, who exposed the truth and many, about many wars around the world, including the war in Vietnam. I was born in uh, Hanoi, uh, one year after Jin Bien Phu, and my father was reported the Vietnam War. Well, two Vietnam Wars, the French War and the uh, American War. So I grew up with the uh, story of the war because my father was uh, spent time in the jungles of the South or also in the North while it was being bombed. So that was the story I grew up with, the uh, heroic struggle for independence and, uh, and unity of the Vietnamese people. So can you talk a little bit about the role your father played in making sure the true information about the war reached Western audiences? Uh, he was the first Westerner to go and uh, spend uh, six months in the liberation zones of Vietnam with the uh, NLF, the National Liberation Front. He used to write regularly for a uh, left-wing newspaper called The Guardian, who was very influential in uh, building up public opinion, especially in the U.S., against the war. And his books were very well read, and his films and photos. So little by little, people got to know more about the war, and uh, people started to realize that uh, which side was fighting a just uh, cause, and which side was just uh, blowing up villages and uh, poisoning, the na destroying the nature, and, uh, and killing lots of people. Um, so among your father's many unique experiences, perhaps the most unique was his interview with Ho Chi Minh, President Ho Chi Minh. Can you tell us a little bit about that interview? Well, that was in uh, 1966. And uh, actually, there's a little anecdote here because uh, uh, my father was actually interviewing, interviewing um, Prime Minister Phan Van Dong. And then uh, Uncle Ho, I always call him Uncle Ho, <coughs> came to just to say hello. And my father says, President, can I ask, uh, can I ask a question? And Uncle Ho said, OK. So the question is, uh, Mr. President, can you say a few words to the French people and to people of the world about this war? And so uh, President Ho Chi Minh's answers, his, uh, that was in 66, after the uh, Americans started bombing the uh, <coughs> North Vietnam as well. So uh, I, think, I think President Ho Chi Minh gives the perfect answer. Who would have thought that Vietnam would win against the uh, not just the greatest war machine, but all its allies and uh, all its uh, power, propaganda power, not just, but it happened, and that's a historic fact. So, uh, so I think Uncle Ho sums it up perfectly, because it's a just war, it's a patriotic war, and also we have the support of almost everybody. Well, yeah. okay. Fifty years have passed since the signing of the Paris Peace Accords, a crucial step towards true peace for Vietnam, which was realized two years later. The people who were once at opposing sides of the battlefront now have the opportunity to meet each other at the place known as the City for Peace. Hôm nay là được gặp lại các bạn, chúng tôi chúng tôi rất vui và rất mong rằng là được nghe những cái 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 tâm sự với những cái trao đổi của các bạn. Yeah, to thank you for taking the time at this very busy 
season uh, to meet with us here today. I was here in Vietnam the first two times in 1971 and 1972. So my activities in the war started much later than all of yours. I had the opportunity to come back to Vietnam in 1981 as part of the first delegation of America veterans to return to Vietnam. And even though it had been almost 10 years since I had been to war, my memories of Vietnam were still of the war. And none of us had any idea what to expect when we came to Vietnam. One day we had the opportunity to walk about Hanoi. People would come up to us and say, are you the American veteran? And we would say yes, and they would say, welcome to Vietnam. It totally blew our minds. How could people be so welcoming to the people that helped cause the death and destruction? We're in Hanoi. The more those time-frozen fro images of war disappeared. And instead of thinking about Vietnam as a war, began to think about Vietnam as a country, a beautiful country made up of extraordinary people with their own hopes and dreams for a better life. You are right. We are getting old. And the opportunities to have these type of exchanges are, will become few. But as you know, it is important to always remember the past so that we don't make the mistakes again in the future. Tôi thì là một cựu chiến binh vào miền Nam chiến đấu. Lúc đấy tôi là sinh viên đang học ở Hà Nội. Tuy rằng đang chiến đấu ác liệt như vậy, chúng tôi là những người lính chiến không bao giờ chúng tôi sợ chết. Không bao giờ chúng tôi sợ chết. Mà chỉ sợ không hoàn thành được nhiệm vụ của nhân dân Việt Nam chúng tôi ra phó. Chúng tôi cũng biết được những người lính phản chiến ở Mỹ và nhân dân Mỹ ủng hộ cuộc kháng chiến chống Mỹ cứu nước của chúng tôi. Và tôi cũng rất cảm động. Cuối cùng thì chúng tôi cũng rất là mong muốn cái mối quan hệ của chúng ta bây giờ bình thường hóa quan hệ và muốn là gắn bó giữa cựu chiến binh để chúng ta truyền đạt cho những con cháu đời sau bảo vệ hòa bình chung của nhân loại. The war is over. The soldiers of both Vietnam and the United States no longer see each other as former enemies, but rather respect each other as true friends, reflecting on the past and looking towards the future. Having experienced countless losses and pain, Vietnam understands the value of peace more than anyone else. The desire for peace and independence has driven millions of Vietnamese hearts to fight and overcome one of the most powerful enemies in the world. The same burning aspiration continues to ignite the minds of millions of Vietnamese to build a strong and mighty nation. As an American citizen, I admire Vietnam for what you have given to young people like me, an understanding of the value of peace. It is not just the absence of gunfire. Above all, it is the genuine happiness of the people that I have witnessed firsthand in a place once devastated by bombs and bullets. As Mr. Bin remarked, the land has been reborn. The rice seeds have sprouted and grown on the land once contaminated by dioxin of war. Now I have found the answer to why Vietnam has emerged victorious and grown strong as it is today. If in the past journalist Wilfred Burchett brought the truth about America's war in Vietnam to the attention of the Western public, then now, with the responsibility of a journalist and a citizen of the younger generation, I feel the need to present the image of a beautiful and vibrant country, rich in patriotic traditions, overcoming difficulties, continuing on the path to socialism, and emerging strong to global readers. <laughs>